Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, welcome to my shop, and today I want to take a closer look at the scrub plane and the four plane and find out what exactly are these for, and are there a bunch of tips and tricks you can learn? Let's dive in. The scrub plane is most commonly known for its iron. It's a very large curved iron. You can see here how there's a large curve or a camber on the iron, how it rounds out. And usually the more narrow the blade is, the larger that curvature is. Most of the time you're looking for something between a sixteenth of an eighth inch of a difference between the outside edges and the tip and how far it sticks out. Mine are pretty close to about an eighth inch of difference. The scrub plane is usually a much more narrow plane, a little bit shorter, around the length of a number four, and it's a very, very basic plane. There are no adjusters and knobs on here. This is hammer set to adjust it, which scares a lot of people, but in honesty, when you're working with something that deep and taking that big of a bite out of a cut, uh, tapping it back and forth is way more accurate than you need. The four plane, on the other end, is usually about the size of a number four all the way up to a number six, but it also has that heavily set cambered iron. It tends tends to be a little bit more of a gradual curvature on there because you're spreading it over a wider set. There is a bit of confusion between the two as often the names are interchangeable. If someone gets a number four or a number five and they put a heavy camber on it and they cut open the mouth a bit more, they might call it a scrub plane. And that's perfectly acceptable. A scrub plane is a plane that you use to scrub the wood. A four plane could be a scrub plane. A scrub plane could be a scrub plane. This is specifically a scrub plane because Stanley sold it as a scrub plane. They, they called it a scrub plane. But if you take a number four or number five and you camber the iron and use it to scrub, then it's a scrub plane. On the other hand though, you don't generally hear a scrub plane being called a four plane. Generally, four plane means something that's a little bit bigger, usually about a five and up larger to around a six. The four plane gets its name because it's a four plane. It comes before the other planes. It is the forerunner. It is the plane where you get kind of dabble in things before you have some fun. People often like to get their knickers in a twist over the fact of one's being a scrub plane and the other's being a four plane. And honestly, I, I generally will call either of them a scrub plane. I won't normally call this a four plane, but if someone does that, yeah, not a problem. All that being said though, they do the same thing. They scrub the wood before the other planes. If you have a board that has a lot of twist and needs a lot of material taken off, you can grab a scrub plane and you can take off a lot of material very quickly. Here's my scrub plane. We're gonna come in and go, yeah. Big, heavy gouge, a lot of terrible mess in here, and it just hogs out a lot of material very, very quickly. In this case, at the bottom of the cut, we're taking out almost an eighth of an inch per pass. It's a really, really deep, heavy cut, and the chips and curls that come out are just nasty looking, but it removes a lot of material very quickly. I generally like to go with the grain, or against the grain, for most of my work. Sometimes I'll come in and I will traverse or go across the grain. That takes a lot less effort to push the plane across the wood. Traversing or going across the wood is the method that most people tend to use. Though I find I kind of like going along the grain. Kind of a personal preference, and sometimes I'll do one and sometimes I'll do another. If the board is rather narrow, I almost always go with the grain. But if the board is rather wide, I almost always traverse it and go across the grain. Nice thing about the scrub planes, it really doesn't matter if you're going with or against the grain. It's taking off such big angry curls that it really doesn't make that big a difference. And that's why you can traverse and go across the board relatively easily. I find most of the time I'm going to be using my scrub plane. It's a little more aggressive and I can take off more because it is narrower. However, sometimes I want that longer, wider body I get with my four plane. This is a, a number five that a while ago I turned into a four plane, which gets kind of confusing because yes, it's a number five turned into a four plane. Four plane has nothing to do with the number, it has to do with B4. So I can take this and with a larger surface, I tend to get a little bit flatter work a little faster. So if I'm working with a large board, sometimes I'm gonna bring this in. And you can hear how it's getting here and sliding here because I've got a bit of a dish. Sometimes I use this to kind of sneak up on it. I'll use the really, really heavy stuff with this and then I'll come in with this and kind of clean up the marks with that. 
And then I can come in with my flat bottom plane that I can actually use to get rid of all of the marks left from the scrub and four plane and clean those up. And then I'll bring in my fancy dancy smoothing plane and just with a couple passes, get rid of any marks left from all three of them. I used to use my four plane and scrub plane every single day. They were one of the tools that I used more than anything else. They took off more material than anything else. And they were the tools that really cut the most. However, recently I found myself buying more S2S and S4S lumber that's relatively twist free and smooth and close to the final dimension I want. And in that case, I, I really have no reason to scrub them. And so I, I very rarely use them anymore. The idea of rough sawn lumber uh, is kind of fun, except for rough sawn lumber means a lot more work. Now, yes, you can do it with that. And it, it works perfectly fine. And for years, I worked with a lot of rough sawn lumber. And for that, the scrub plane and the four plane are phenomenal. They can, they can just chew through this like nothing. But you're still doing a lot of work that you know you, you can you can buy already done and so the older i get the more I, I i i like to let the hard work be done by someone else and then i can skip straight to the smoothing plane and i can spend all my time really uh detailing it in and, and feeling those beautifully butterful smooth gorgeous curls that uh, yeah you just don't get smooth buttery curls with a scrub plane one of the problems is this thing's got a curved iron so how exactly do you sharpen this thing because yeah, that's gotta be difficult, right? The great thing is they don't have to be crazy sharp. I mean, you can really let these get relatively dull before you have to tear them apart and sharpen them. Uh, when I was using them, when I was using them all the time, I would generally only sharpen once a year, maybe once every six months, maybe. You can let them get relatively dull and they'll still do the work. Now, they are easier to push when they're sharp, but when they get relatively dull, um, honestly, they, they still work. Now, if you let them get really dull, you might not be able to do it with this. And that's why I often break out one of my extra, extra coarse plates. This is actually one from DFM Toolworks. Because this will march through it a lot faster and I can actually get that burr exactly where I want it to be. What I do is I set it on, find my angle, and I'm going to lean it up onto one of the high edges, bring it across to the far side, and as I pull it back, I'm just going to rotate it so I'm on the opposite corner when I get to the bottom here. And then I can push it back and forth. That's going to give me this little cross pattern on the stone. So if I want to get the other way, I start up over here on this side, and then I rock it back onto this side. And it's a bit of skill. It's a bit of practice. As you rock it, you're pulling it back towards you. And once you really get into it, you can go back and forth, just rocking as you go. And then occasionally switch up the pattern the other direction. Or if you really want to, you can just slowly rock it as you move around the plate. Some people like to actually go across. They'll start up here on one corner and then by the other end they're up on the other corner. This allows you to work across the plate and use up the whole surface. I personally like to do several different methods every time I sharpen it, just so that I'm honing my skills and being able to do it different ways at different times. But as long as you're good at one of them, that's all you really need. After that really coarse, then I'm going to go back into my normal one and go one, two, three. I'm looking until I get a decent burr on the back all the way across. That lets me know I'm ready for the next step. On this one, I'm going to use this pattern so that all my scratches are going lengthwise across the bevel. Once I get a nice, clean, consistent scratch pattern all the way across, then I'll go on to the next one. On that one, I change my direction 90 degrees so that one scratch will cover up the other one. Here you can start to see how the scratches that were going all the way along are starting to get covered up by the scratches going across the iron. And I'll go until I eliminate all the scratches on one and then move on to the next one and change the pattern again. After that, I'm just going to flip the burr a little bit, one or two passes on the stone, take it onto the strop. On the strop, I'm going to do the same movement, starting on one point, ending on the other point. And I'm going to go in different directions, or I might want to do different strokes. In each stroke, I'm going to rotate it just at a slightly different spot on the bevel. Once I've done a few strokes on this side, and I get a nice shiny effort on there, I flip it over, work the burr back and forth just a couple times. And yeah, that's what I want. That's, that's If you're using a plane that has a modified iron, the chip breaker does not need to be anywhere near the tip. I usually have it backed off so that the corners aren't even touching the corners of the iron. Lock that down, put it in the plane, and you're ready to go. And the feeling after you sharpen the first time, it's just... <laughs> it just marches right through it. 
you're getting an almost finished ready scalloped cut that looks beautiful. And with simple woods like poplar and pine, this is a lot of fun. Though oak can be a bit of a pain. Though the harder the wood is, the more pain it is. And often with hardwoods, I'm going to do the far corner. Clean that up with a bit of a bevel on here so I don't get so much blowout when I go across. And with hardwoods, I tend to do far more traversing. If you want to work with rough sawn lumber, a scrub plane or a four plane is almost a necessity. They are fantastic tools that can do a lot of work really, really quickly. A lot of people fantasize over the smooth, small curls of the smoothing plane, but in all honesty, it's the curls from the scrub plane that get the work done. They are the workhorses. They're not pretty, they're not everyone's favorite, but, and they do it fast, they do it efficiently, and they don't give you any guff. They just get it done. The smoothing plane on the other end is a bit of a prima donna. If everything isn't absolutely perfect, I'm not going to perform for you. I've got to be sharp within an inch of my life. And the scrub plane's over there like, yeah, you know what, get the work done and get back to it. We're here for a job, let's make it happen. Oddly enough though, when it comes to prices, scrub planes are surprisingly expensive. And the reason being is that most of the time, most woodworkers would take their junky planes that were worn out from other work and they would turn it into a scrub plane because it doesn't need to be anything special. It can be a tool that's all beat up and banged up with a big mouth and it will still work as a scrub plane. So very few woodworkers actually went out and bought a special scrub plane. And because of that, there aren't many of the antiques out there. They aren't as common as you would find other planes. And when things have less quantity and people still want them, then the price goes up and up and up. And you can buy one of these for the price of six or seven number fives because there just aren't as many of them. So if you want a scrub plane, go get a number four or number five, put a cambered iron on it, throw it in there and have some fun. I do have an old video putting a cambered iron on this one, and I wanna do another one here soon, actually redoing that because it was, it's kind of a fun video, and it's a relatively simple process that you can do with just sandpaper. A scrub plane is a great tool because you don't have to overthink it. You can just get a junky plane that doesn't work for other things and turn it into a scrub plane. So I hope you like this. A scrub plane or a four plane is a great plane to have in the shop. If you have any questions though, or things I didn't talk about, or things you think I did wrong, please let me know that down below. I love reading through those and I answer a lot of the questions that I get. I answer as many minutes as I get to. But honestly, putting those questions down there really helps out the channel. Anytime you do that, or you like, share, subscribe, comment, thank you. You help us get in front of more people. And there's a whole group of people here who just put comment down below. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. Uh, comment down below is usually get a heart from me, so. Thank you for that. Uh, but if you really want to go big and you really want to say, I love you, James, the thing about joining these people over here, those are some of the patrons on Patreon. Without patrons or members, you guys are the ones who allow us to do what we do. Thank you. Without you, we wouldn't be here. So if you'd like to find out more about that, you know what to do down below. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day.